It seems like every time we have an update with my recently purchased abandoned Porsche 914 that I bought in a pretty sorry state for itself, it's even worse than the time before. Well, today we're heading up to Yorkshire Car Restoration to go and see the car for which the seats are up here on the lift, but the car, as Ryan and Steve have called it, is a financial disaster a bit of a money pit. We know that there's a lot of rust in the arches. We know it's a banana and a little bit bent out of shape, but they've been stripping it down. And today, apparently there's even more bad news. So we're gonna be hopping into the Ferrari Puro Sangue, which is kind of in need of a run out to head up. We've got some errands to run. Plus here at this museum, now that I've returned after a pretty long time on the road, there are some updates and some more things going on. You will notice this corner is looking a little bit different because we are rejoined by Martin and George from Novus who are cracking on with some more work to build the dream garage. More on that in a second. We've also had the SF90 over at Ferrari for its second year annual service. Two years ago, I was in Maranello collecting this to drive it for the first time. That time has flown by. Since getting back home, the GT Black Series has had a full wheels off detail with Hart's Car Spa. There are a few things that are gonna need refreshing, but we will crack on with that soon. Other updates, I don't think all that much has changed. The Pura Sangue has also been to Ferrari. You might remember from the big tour we did back at the end of last year, it had a warning light, so it's had that problem solved and everything around that. Otherwise, all pretty much as we know it. The topic of the day is of course the 914 and in its absence we have a 1 to 18 scale model which coincidentally is in Lichtgrün, the same colour we saw one in at the Nürburgring recently. Now that's not going to be my colour of choice but stay tuned for the updates and what I am going to be going for as this project develops. But before we get on the road, a quick one, Schmoo the Cow. A lot of you have been asking me, Schmoo the Cow is going to be back in stock very soon but I also want to tell you how Schmoo the Cow connects to the sponsor of today's video, Fiverr. So more on that in just a moment. Now there's a lot to whiz around and just update on very quickly before we hit the road in the Pura Sangue. Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to an update on my financial disaster of a Porsche 914. <laughs> Coming through, you might have just seen, we have basins and we have toilets at long last. I know I've been in this space for about two and a half years, but this was always the plan. So come on around here where we have Martin and George. How's it going? Good morning, very well, very well indeed. So what is going on? Well, now that we've had an expedition to go and buy some uh, sanitary ware and cupboards, we need to set them all out. Um, plumber's book for next week. We need to put these in place, uh, ready for first fix for all the uh, drainage and water. So this is, this is the bit that we probably should have done a very long time ago. Um, yeah, I've awesome. been desperate for a wee for about <laughs> six months, but now we're nearly there. It's time, it's time. This is quite interesting because you don't often see much of this part of the process, the whole cavity wall to fit the plumbing and everything behind. Yeah, it keeps it all hidden. Um, if you try to fit it all into a small wall with that width, especially when you've got a waste pipe that could be four inches in diameter, it's not going to fit in there. So you build a cavity wall, you can hide everything in. Also, you then got the sink and waste and water heater on the other side. So it's just a convenient spot to put everything and it's hidden out of the way. Nice and easy. Very, it sounds easy, but it's probably not in reality because there's a whole lot to fit in. And then this room is a slightly larger bathroom, basically. Yes, this is the master suite <laughs> and this isn't. So when we return later today, it's all finished? It's all done? We will be finished. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For the day. For the day. This is probably the next couple of weeks to get this done, but that's not all because, well, let me head back out through a wall that won't be possible in the future and show you what else is being done. Simultaneously, the other thing that needed to be done is over at this side and this room. We basically left this room for a while. It's going to become a bit of a stock room, supply room, sorry, it's very dark. Obviously everything has had to come out because it also needs electrics, it needs some sockets installed, it needs insulating and it needs the AC installed and a few other things as well. So that's all work in progress on this front. We also happen today to have an errand to go pick up some more of these boards, the boards that you know, from the grandstand that are up here. We're gonna change a few around. We've got a few more to pick. So you'll have to stay tuned to see what we're gonna go and get later today. I'm sorry I've said that a few times, but one thing to test therefore is do these actually fit in the Pura Sangue? Because imagine if we took this car up and we weren't able to pick any up along the way. That would potentially be a bit of a disaster. Luckily in here, at the press of a button, I've said that, is it gonna work? You can in theory fold the seat down. There we go, going. And then pull out the shelf, 
which can be tucked away under this floor. You've got a storage space under here, so we'll get to that in a second. Um, I'm delicately balancing this. Let me fold this down just so I can show you loosely how this is going to work. A practical Ferrari to collect some massive signboards. I think that works just fine. Solution. The perfect car. What else do you need? If only you could put a tow bar on the back. Unfortunately, at this stage, you can't. At the back over here, we also have the winter wheels, of course, for the GT Black Series with their winter tyres, which I don't know if those will just sit until next winter or if I'll swap them to a set of Cup 2Rs, maybe. If we have some hardcore track days ahead, decisions to be made. I do at some point need to pop these back on the Pura Sangue. These are the Pura Sangue summers because now that winter is basically ending and you can kind of see they have this acoustic foam inside, which makes them brilliant for cancelling out some of the road noise that you hear and just make it a really, really nice car. So maybe we'll swap those back over and have a general tidy up because there are all sorts of tires. And I'm like, what are these for? These, I think, are for the 1M, probably. We need to put some new tires on the 1M. That's another set of winters. Stockpiles of tires, absolute stockpiles, which should probably end up in the storage. But the storage needs a complete reshuffle for some of the electrics that are going down that side, including to the Jura workshop. So at the moment, the Zenvo is in the halo bay, looking amazing over there. But I think we need to pull that out first to make a space for Martin to be able to have some of the stuff. So we'll pull that maybe over here one step at a time today. One Zembo TSRS swinging round. Always the challenge of the turning circle. And a few backwards and forwards, but we're gonna move this to park it up next to Richard's Mercy SV that's hanging here and Max's XJ220S. Be quite a cool little lineup. With the Zenvo in position and Martin cracking on with what he's doing, he's the guy to go to for things to physically build here at the Schmuseum. But when it comes to digital services, that's where Fiverr steps in and has been a big part of this guy, Schmoo the Cow. If you dream it, someone on Fiverr can certainly do it. It's a place that connects you with talented freelancers that offer a variety of digital services. Think anything from website development and AI services to video asset creation, video editing, and social media marketing. I actually first used Fiverr myself 12 years ago, back in 2012, but more recently in connection with Schmoo the Cow. In fact, to create some of his favorite pastimes from being a photographer to skateboarding to even working as a mechanic. And I couldn't have done this without the help of a freelancer on Fiverr. Plus, I can't wait to share with you what Schmoo the Cow is going to be up to in the future too. We wanted to create a version of Schmoo the Cow in motion and bang on cue, Super Schmoo the Cow arrives. Now, when choosing a freelancer, you can take a look at reviews and ratings to see what previous customers have thought. You can also check out the freelancer's portfolio to see their previous projects and their skill set. You can even do one-to-one -one personalized consultations to get input from the freelancer to make sure that you've got the best ideas for the project rather than just buying off the shelf or only doing it via messages. And this is exactly how we found Ghost Coach to animate Schmoo the Cow like this this. Not only does he have great reviews and an impressive portfolio, but has been absolutely on it from the get-go to bring this project to life. I've used Fiverr for plenty of things in the past and will continue to do so for many more into the future. So make sure to check out the services that are available at fiverr.co slash shmi, the link below. Plus with my discount code shmi, you can get 10% off as well. So what are you waiting for? Take a look and see what ideas you can realize. Thanks to Fiverr for sponsoring today's video. For now, let's go. One of the things that I think you have to love about this car is when you enter a tunnel, the fact that this is a comfortable cruiser, but also does this. <laughs> it's absolutely mad. Just the V12 wail in the background. I'm not sure how much of that you can hear over the general wind and noises of the tunnel, or alternatively, obviously you put it into comfort or wet or whatever mode, turn on cruise control and literally let the car do its thing. I mean, I've done already about three and a half thousand miles in this car, which for a pretty early delivery for a Sangue is not exactly bad going. And for a drive like today, it's just such a wonderful place to be. Like it's a magnificent car to just cruise in, to just waft along. 
lots of funky gimmicks, touch controls on here, this thing in the middle that you press and it pops up to do your AC and rotate this and that kind of stuff. You can hear the beeping away of the lane monitoring things and all of the other tech and whatnot. But it's, it's a nice way to spend a few hours, let's put it that way. Now that we're off the motorway stretch, which has been, to be honest, a little bit more traffic than we would like. I can have it in manual and we have some national speed limit roads and roundabouts. There's a Tesla at the front. He obviously has lots of power, but will he use it? Apparently not right now. Come on, guys. Come on. Right, let's get ready, get ready, get ready. Second gear. Just nuts. I now have some new boards, but you're going to have to wait and see what these are when we get home and we unpackage them because they have kindly wrapped them up for today so that we can put them in here just like this and continue our journey. That's almost too easy. Um, the backrest parts actually stow away under here, which makes it smooth and simple. It's kind of like you expect a Ferrari to be a challenge. The FF and the Lussos always made it possible to do Ikea trips and all sorts of random things. But that is a new league of practicality in a car that drives like an 812. Talking of which, it might be wet and miserable, four-wheel drive, the fun continues. The perfect timing coming out of a junction onto an empty national speed limit road. There's just one problem with doing this. Low fuel, permanently low fuel. Actually, you can get a good range out of this car. I've got to be fair with it. But um, certainly if I keep doing that, it's going to drain very, very quickly. I also like the different Manatino settings, the different bumpy road settings, because you can go through medium, soft and hard which is something that other Ferrari models don't have. They just have normal or bumpy road. Whereas in here you can customize and be in exactly the mode that you would like it to be in. Anyway, not too far to go until we arrive and get to see the guys and to see how Patches is looking. And when I say that, all I can tell you is that the messages I have received in advance make me uh, a little bit anxious about how this is actually gonna be. We have arrived. <laughs> Gents, how are you doing? Not too bad. Doing? This is looking a little bit different. Yes, a little bit. Yeah, we, well, we've uncovered some surprises as well. Just a few. Some yeah, really just a few. Surprises. <laughs> we've got to talk about a couple of things. Yeah. Firstly, the last time I saw this, it was fully blue. It's no longer blue. Yeah. But kind that's... Of silvery colour now. Yeah, yeah that's, that's revealed some stuff. Um, where do we begin? Like well, we could begin on this. I mean, this, yeah. is, this is quite bad in, in comparison, you know. Um, and then, yeah, we've taken a lot of the paint off around here and then down here. And, and then when you get to here, <laughs> then you just see this whole amalgamation of filler. That's where it gets bad. <laughs> this is ridiculous. When you sent me the first picture of this, um, obviously this is new to me, I'm learning. Yeah. Trying to figure out what I'm actually looking at here. Your, your funky pattern and, and design, but it reveals how much extra stuff was put on here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so it's it, a good 15 mil there, isn't it? It's like the, the evolution of, um, of the filler. You can see here it's not very thick and then it just gets thicker and thicker. And I decided to use the wire wheel and you know, just get in that corner to see how thick it was. And it's like 10 or 15 mil thick. Yeah. And it's absolutely ridiculous. You can actually see the old panel that they've stitched in here all the way down around there. And I've just filled it full of filler. And this could be one of the reasons why this tower has actually slightly moved as well. Yeah. And the, the roof doesn't actually fit. And then I decided to, you know, Keep, keep the artistic skills going <laughs> and uh, write the word patches in. Yeah. Which, uh, which means well name, name. You sent me the photo of that and we all just cracked up. It was kind of like, yep, yep. Uh, it's, it's interesting to me actually seeing how much is on. Like, what, what, why does it end up having so much filler shoved on it like this? It's basically a bad repair. So when the, when the panel gets put on, sometimes they push the old panel in. You can see it there. They yeah. push the old panel in. So it's actually further behind than where it should be. And then they just fill it full of filler because filler is e easier to manipulate and shape than what metal is. Yeah. So that's what they've basically done. Yeah, they basically they've lap welded it. What they've done is when you put a metal sheet over a top of a metal sheet, you get a bridge, you get a step, and they've got to take that step out with filler. The problem is if they haven't welded the bottom right, it then all carries on getting thicker and thicker and thicker. And that's what they've done. They've actually 
welded this on as a patch. So we're, we're guessing probably the original rust is still under there. Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. That's going to be coming soon. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, can, you can see that, I mean, it wasn't very thick here and it's not very thick here and it kind of bows in like that where yeah. this repair is. So yeah, it just, it's filled. You can see the multiple layers yeah. of filler. Yeah, and that's then, that blue one, like bluey greeny colour is yeah. glass fibre. Yeah. And then it's got multiple layers of filler underneath and, and on top above. of it. Yeah. And we're ignoring the fact that there are actually holes here and <laughs> lots of holes here. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about these holes. Uh, yeah, so th this is, we've taken these panels out. Now these are not original panels. Yeah. These are actually the panels that people have put on and that's actually a double, double panel, a double whammy. Buy that's metal on metal on metal. Basically, yeah. And if you look in here, you can actually see that this is all still original and there's just holes everywhere. Wow, so this was all covered? This was all underneath this? Yes, basically what they've done is they've just put a panel on and welded it like that. Instead of butt welding it properly, they've actually just lap welded it. Like my dad says, they put a panel on top and just welded so it. So it's basically metal on metal on metal on rust. Yeah, yeah. leaving all the rust in. And we're calling right. patches. <laughs> so let's not start counting patches. So um, question I have then, that's this side. You haven't yet approached that side. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be the same. Yeah. We can already see underneath the sealant, there is something going off there. We haven't taken it off yet. We think it's better than this side, but we know in all those seams, there's rust. And you can we don't know how much of it yet. So yeah. You can just imagine there's big patches all the way from the front, all yeah. the way here. There's a big patch here. There's a big patch here in the hell hole. We've got yeah. multiple layers of patches. Yeah. And that's all moved this tower. So I'm trying to squeeze the camera down here. And that's why it's a banana. Because all of these panels are all new, right? They're not the originals. Yes. That's not what it was like. Exactly. Yeah. No. So that, that's probably why your wheel was also on the skew. Yeah. The, the, the main reason why the wheel's actually on the skew is because the, all the mounting points for the bottom arms and everything, they've all been made. They've been made out of pieces of metal. Um, so they're not in the correct position. So if you imagine your wheels on a, a triangle there, if you move this front pivot down, yeah. it moves your wheel in. Yeah. And that's what's going off in this corner. The, the front pivot is down, so it's moved your wheel in. Hence why we're catching the inner firewall. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, and what they've done is they've cut so much metal out and not braced it up at the time. What you're supposed to do is if you cut a lot of metal out, the first thing you've got to do is weld a brace in here. Yeah to stop any of this body flexing at all. So what they've done is they've taken all this metal out, it's let the car basically droop Got on it. its back edge. And what that's done is it's moved this pillar, this roof bar, away. And we've got, well, we've got six millimeters difference here yeah. between this side and the other side. <laughs> on the back, we've got four, millim four millimeters drop here. Okay. Hence the car's just basically sagged in this corner, pulled this roof bar away. There also may be a little bit of movement here with, yeah. the, with the roof bar if we don't get it. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this corner, we're going to take all the metal out, we're going to take this corner, lift it up or jig it up. Hopefully that should move that, that bar back towards the front. If it doesn't, you know, if it's not enough, we've then got to take this out. This is coming out anyway, yeah. but we've then got to take this out <laughs> and we've got to pull this that way to try and get this roof cap in back. <laughs> It's, it's Simple. Ended. And that, yeah, that's all because they've not braced it up yeah. when they've cut so much metal out and so, when they've welded so much metal in. So this is currently sitting on a jig, which is fascinating because I don't know much about how this works. Um, yeah, can we have a bit of an explanation yeah. intro? They're, they're, quite, they're quite simple actually, uh, when you think about it. We've, what we've got is we've got a massive great big steel bed and what we've done via the sills, we've actually clamped because this is, this is clamped to the sills this is clamped to this, and this is clamped to the frame. Yeah. So you've actually got your car clamped to this jig by these, by four big clamps each corner. Now, what what you do from there is once that's once that's actually that's it. We need a lamp in there. Once this is this car is clamped to the jig, we've then got this measuring frame. Uh, this is this is movable. Yeah. Uh, what we do is we position that up to this, uh, underneath the car. We then centre it off to the car, and we then measure the corners. Well, we 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 measure. We've got everything square first. Yeah. Because we use the jacking points on these four four corners. Yeah. And we make sure the car's floor pan is straight. From there, we can measure if all the corners are straight. Okay. And we use these here. You can see this here. Yeah. This has now got 
a little locator in it. Yep. These are interchangeable from different cars. Ah, okay. A little locator in that. That goes into a locator that's in your car. You lock that off and we get a measurement. Yeah. But we also get a measurement of the center as well with this one here. Okay. Because as we push this in and out. Okay. Yeah. We've got this here. So we, we know, side, let's get that back in on. Side to side, back to front. We know what exact measurements we've got yeah. in each corner. Hence, we know this is a couple of millimetre out on this front. A little bit of crash damage. Yeah. These are these are absolutely bang on the floor pan straight. So the, back the back floor corner. is square? The floor is square. That's yeah. good. Yeah, One bit of yeah, good news that's, today. That, 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 that's, that keeps me heart beating because <laughs> if the floor's out, it means the whole car is not only just bent on corners, yeah. but it's actually twisted. If yeah. it's twisted, it's a whole new kettle of fish. Yeah. So you said the front is slightly out. We knew before but well, you guys had already worked out that there had been some stuff here. Yeah, yeah, there's been, there's been a little bit of an impact here because what we've got is we've got some creasing and we've got a new wing that's been welded in but not protected at some point. And in this gully here, we can see fiberglass where we should have proper spot welds. Yeah. So it's been covered over and there's sealant and all sorts in there. So it's had a new wing. Um, this, this new wing has also been mounted at the bottom here, about two millimetres too far this way. What they've done... Really? Yeah, I mean, it's all, in, it's all in line here. What they've actually done is they've probably pushed this in as they've welded the bottom. The problem yeah. is that if you push this in, the front's going to flex that way. And yeah. They've welded it in. They've not measured this gap in between here. So the door catches here and here, but it's too wide here and here. Yeah, I remember that. The, we could see that before, yeah, yeah. visibly, with so the panel gap. what we've got to do is, when we, before we, um, we've got to move the car basically that way, which will open up the door gap. Yeah. Um, that, we found that because it's, it's creasing here and here from welding here. What that'll do is, as you're welding it in, it shrinks and it pulls. And it's basically trying to pull all your metal together. Yeah. So it puts a little bit of a bend in here because all the floor pan has been replaced as well. Well, all the section of the edge of the floor pan has been replaced as well. So we've got to take all that metal out. We've got to pull the car that way to try and open this up. We've got to take off this wing and move it about two millimetre that way. That should give us four millimetres bottom door gap in. Then we've got too much up here, so we have to keep <laughs> the car up that way to close this and this, and that will give us a door gap in back. The other side's fine. And then just like magic, the door, the door will fit in, it's done, easy. It sounds very complicated. It sounds very complicated, but once you get it in your head, it's fairly simple. Then the back is the opposite because that's drooped down at one side. Yeah, that, that's drooped down, that's drooped down, and this, this is actually, it's, it's kind of come this way, yeah. which has closed the door off, and because there's so much metal out of there and that there, and it's not been braced here to keep that up, this corner's actually drooped down. Now there's no, no seal, real serious fabrication done on that side, yeah. hence why everything that seems is still right. in line. Yeah. So, so we've, got a, we've, not also got, we've also got a book yeah. that tells us all the measurements, but we've also got reference from the other side as well so we've yep. got some good references to where this car needs to be and i think you said that the back is a lot more than the front it is yeah so yeah. if you come around past past the name which i would love yeah. to keep i'd love to have had that like saved somehow well this 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 basically what we're doing is we you center the car up with the jig yeah um to the movable frame so the car is not centered on the jig it's actually centered on the frame yeah and we take measurements from the frame and we can take up and down measurements from the jig surface itself. But going with everything, we know this, this back end is square, but this side has dropped and moved. So it's yeah. been pulled a little bit that way, but it's more shrinkage than movement. Okay. So it's pulled it in a little bit, but luckily it hasn't pulled the back down, plus there's enough strength to keep it there, which is yeah. good. So, Easy, easy work then? <laughs> easy. I mean, you can see this side as well. Yeah. You can see they've actually okay. oh, yeah. just stuffed a load of uh, filler and fiberglass in there. You can see it's pitting around there and it's actually, yeah, disappeared there. Um, and if you move slightly further towards the back of the car, or the front of the car, sorry, you can see the big patch that they've actually just yeah. spot welded in there because it's not actually fully welded. And they've, again, filled it full of filler. I thought, I started on this side, yeah. and I thought this was bad. <laughs> and then I got to that side, and it was 100 times worse. Yeah, this is, this is the same thing they've done the other side, so they've just done it worse. It's the, the same side. repair, though? Yeah, the same... yeah, same repair, yeah. just deeper. And they've, you, can, you can actually see where they've hit it with hammers to try and get it yeah. further in. 
Yeah. Uh, because they haven't bent it far enough. And the problem is, you, you, once you've welded it up, I mean, they haven't even welded it up. You can see they're just tack welds. Yeah. This this is open. So when they hit it with hammers, that's that's got to go somewhere. So that will pull everything with it as they're bashing it in. So that's what... why they have to pack it with so much filler. What happens next, though? You've got to cut all of these bits out, cut all those bits out. We're just going to lacquer over it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fill it again. <laughs> just yeah. a whole load more filler. <laughs> so, so basically, we'll cut this, this yeah. patch out here and try yeah. and retain as much of the original as possible. Yeah. Once that's out, we can see how good the metal is and what's behind it, because usually this panel here will extend into here, and they'll just literally, as you saw in the disaster Datsun, they'd put a panel on and just weld it and leave all the rust in there. So we need to take this panel out, as I have done with those ones in there, and then just see what sort of um, condition that original is in. Yeah. And yeah. then we can start rebuilding it. But before that, what we have to do is we do have to straighten the car up before we take these out. Yeah. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to square the car up and see if that gives us the measurement back there. If it doesn't give us the measurement back there, we can then weld some bracing on to keep the rest of the car there. And then when we cut this out, we've then got to jig this forward. If, uh, it, yeah. if it straightens up without, without us taking this out, we then just take this out, we brace it up as it is, and then we take this out. Otherwise, we have to take this out, then jig it forward a little bit more with the roof, and then brace it up, and then we can weld it out. So it's a slightly different process, depending on how far we get with that corner, and taking that bend out as well. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, you'll have done some more with this before petrol hedonism, where this well, is going yeah, to be yeah. <laughs> to be yeah, seen. Yeah. yeah, this is going to petrol hedonism. Obviously, we're going to take it off the jig and put it on a dolly, so it's easily movable. Yeah. Or on a rotisserie. Or rotisserie. Yeah, we've not quite decided yet. Um, but yeah, this will be a petrol hedonism along with Matt Armstrong's E24 as well, which is currently being painted. Um, but yeah, this will be going there, and you can even see some some bad repairs oh, here. Oh yeah. As well. And all these seams seem to have gone. <laughs> they, they just, they, they kind of, it looks like at some point they've uncovered filler and just pushed fiberglass inside it. Yeah. They've not tried to do anything with it, yeah. they've just it's pushed fiberglass inside it, level it off and just fill it over the top. The reason is because it's easy. Yeah, it's because easy. Yeah. It's easier to jam some fiber, because to repair this you'd have to cut all that out, you'd have to refabricate Re it, you'd yeah. have to shape it to the, the original and then obviously fill it over it. But what they've done is just jammed some fiberglass in there, fill her over, sanded it down, and it's done. done. And, a, and as you know, when you first pick this car up, it can make them look wonderful. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's amazing, actually, when you start to dig into it. Yeah. Two cars yeah. could cosmetically, initially, look identical. Yeah. Yeah. But once you start getting to the nitty-gritty of this... We were That's slightly it. concerned when you turned up because it looked good. <laughs> we, it was like we were expecting there wasn't it's, enough work for it's us. It was too, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> it was too good. We thought, oh, we'll just yeah. put it back together. Yeah, but we'll just put it back together. I mean, nope. Yeah. No. yeah, the inside of the shop was like Christmas Day because it was just white everywhere. I you'll, was covered. You'll see that in the next video. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. was covered. Well, I did ask you guys if we should go ahead with it before. <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, we're, it's, nothing, it's nothing we haven't done before. Yeah. 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 It's well doable. It's just a little bit of an adventure. <laughs> Adventure is the understatement of the, the day, yeah. but... Easy stuff. Easy peasy. There's also an engine lurking here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was the engine that we dropped out with yours. It actually took 20 minutes to take it out. Yeah. It was dead simple, dead easy. Um, yeah, it's a little tiny bit dusty because yeah. obviously it was snowing when we were doing your car. Um, <laughs> you can see the nice structural repair here. Yeah. Which was holding the speedo cable, I think it was, on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can really see the, the size of the engine. We had to get four people to make sure it was balanced to obviously take it out. Yeah. Because we didn't want it, you know, going side to side. Tipping, falling everywhere. It's funny because that needs a massive clean up, really. Yes. I mean, it's going to need a lot of work as well. But yeah. the aim, in my mind, is to get this back in it and running properly. Yes. I mean, we, we did get it running. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, properly. It needs to be properly. <laughs> so this will need a full engine rebuild um, and obviously recondition as well. Um, we've got the gearbox here and everything gets dropped out at the yeah. same time. And then obviously you can separate the gearbox from the engine. Um, but yeah, it's a relatively simple engine to, to rebuild, yeah. to be honest. Easy. Yeah. Always easy. Easy is the word of the day. Easy. <laughs> Before we go, what we've just been doing is playing Tetris in the boot of a Ferrari, because in addition to the boards, we now have basically the interior of the 914. The seats and the bulkhead are at home, but we've got the dashboard, the central console, the steering wheel, some of the A-pillar and roof trims, and our boards as well, all of which are protected in another YouTuber's duvet, as it happens, in the bed sheets to look after all of that. But it's the practical Ferrari. 
using it for practical purposes because all of those need to get trimmed with what we're going to be doing next with them. So I think for the time being, it's a big thanks to the guys here for their work and everything that they've been doing with patches, but we need to jump back home because I need to show you more of this stuff when we get back to the museum. It is time to head out. See you later, guys. So back we go to base. We go past the Manta here. I know they are a cult car that everyone loves. There are actually quite a few very cool cars the guys have here. Anyway, off we go. Home to London via fuel. Now that we're back at base, let me show you these boards and slowly unpack some of this stuff that we need to do. So we have these new boards that are gonna go up on the grandstand that we've picked up today. They are quite properly taped up, but maybe I can just peel this open. Ah, it's okay. Make a mess of this packaging, but we can do it. We can make this work. And then I can show you exactly what we have here. I've only got one shot at this to get it right. So we have Liqui Molly, of course, whom we have done the servicing of the 1M. We have Valencia home theater seating, as we have the home theater set up in the lounge. We have various iterations of Shmoo the Cow, the different hobbies that he's been taking part in. And of course, Turbo Transport, who has done so many movements of the Shmimobiles. So we need to figure out what's gonna go where. We'll get to that. I also need to figure out unpacking all of these parts. Give us a minute. We then have, in addition to the stuff up top, dashboard, roof panels, the sun visors as well, and plenty more with a bit of a plan. But I need to grab our very handy DeWalt work light to come and show you what Martin has been up to. Now, all of those parts, plus the parts that are up here, seats, bulkhead, etc., are going to be all changed. That's going to be a separate project. But over here during today, firstly, there's a bit of a workshop now in the Halo Bay. This actually needs to go back because one of them came without a seat, which is kind of annoying, but that's a thing for another day as well. Come through here though and have a look at the progress. We now kind of have some rooms. We've got some walls. Obviously that's the first one. And then on this side, a bit more space as well being worked on. So you can see where all of this is headed. There's quite a lot of progress actually for one day. Obviously there's a lot more that needs to be done in here to finish it all off. Leave that there for the time being, but not bad for one day. Nice little step changes. It's good to be home, to have gone to see Patches, to get Martin and George back here up and running with some of the project for the museum. But of course, I'd also like to say thanks again to the sponsor of today's video, Fiverr. Make sure to take a look at the different services that are on offer and the things that you might like to realize from your ideas as well. Check out fiverr.co slash shmi and use the discount code shmi for 10% off, as I mentioned earlier, all of the information down below. That's it for this time though. Thank you very much for watching guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot. Stay tuned for more with patches until it returns here at the Shim Museum in future. That's it though. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Cheers!